In the previous lesson, we learned the key processes involved in the assessment of cascading and compound risks at the community level. Now, by utilizing these outcomes, we will move on to conceive measures to address the compound and cascading disaster risks and vulnerabilities. In this lesson, you will learn a three-step process to design resilient strengthening measures so your community can withstand compound and cascading disasters. You will be building your capacities based on your existing disaster risk reduction practices, available capacities, and needs. Let's get started with this lesson. Resilience enhancement measures against compound and cascading disasters will consider the prevention and minimization of damages as well as preparation for better reconstruction to ensure adaptive recovery. They will build on the existing disaster risk management framework progressively. In other words, there should be additional approaches to conventional disaster risk reduction measures. Identified options will be multifunctional, generate multi-outcomes, and be flexible enough to be utilized under various circumstances. Ultimately, the identified resilience enhancement measures will form the building blocks of a systemic, systemic disaster response mechanism. So why do we need to take additional approaches to compound and cascading disasters? This is because compound and cascading disasters often affect a large territory and last for a more extended period than single disasters. It also creates additional pressures to an already stressed area. And if one of them is a slow onset, then the whole system has deep impacts. Therefore, the disaster risk management framework should consider these external effects for the preparedness, response, and recovery processes. The identified risk enhancement measures should address the systemic risks and impacts caused by potential compound and cascading events along space and time. Resilience enhancement measures will address all the elements of the disaster management cycle. The disaster management cycle has three steps. Pre-disaster preparedness, response, and post-disaster recovery. The first step is comprehensive preparedness based on understanding the mechanism of compound and cascading disasters in proactive and inclusive ways. The second step is preventive response measures to break the chain of impacts of a particular disaster. The last step is the post-recovery stage, where decision-making should take into account the adaptive recovery or build back better approaches. So let's dive more deeply into each of these three steps of the disaster management cycle and learn how we can create resilience enhancement measures against compound and cascading disaster risks. Step one is preparedness to prevent losses, damages, and impacts of compound and cascading disasters. Most importantly, local people must understand what is likely to happen after one or more hazards strike based on the outcome of risk assessment, which was illustrated in part two. Then, communities and stakeholders can take measures to reduce exposure or vulnerability. For instance, local authorities can reduce exposure by preventing people from accessing places or engaging in businesses or development activities in high-risk areas. Similarly, communities can consider reducing vulnerability to disaster by approaching vulnerable populations or communities prior to disasters. The case of Iloilo City in the Philippines is an example of good practices on how to decrease vulnerability to COVID-19. Iloilo City created a vaccine prioritization matrix to visualize high-risk communities within the city. Prioritization is based on the fact that high-risk communities have low vaccination rates, especially among the elderly, and also have high incidence of COVID cases. The vaccination starts from the highest risk community, which will reduce the deaths in the quickest possible time. 
The Philippines is regularly affected by multiple natural disasters, including typhoons, volcanic eruptions, and earthquakes. This vaccination, vaccine prioritization map will also mitigate the city's vulnerability to the potential compound occurrence of natural disasters. The second step is response to compound and cascading disasters. Once a disaster occurs, the priority of response is to prevent further cascading of effects and stop secondary disasters from happening. It is crucial to take timely action to stop a chain of cascading impacts, such as by providing timely alerts to populations at risk so that they can evacuate and take necessary safety measures before the potential secondary impacts. An example of good practice is the multi-hazard early warning system. Multi-hazard early warning systems address several hazards and impacts in situations where disaster may occur alone, simultaneously, cascading, or cumulatively over time, and consider the potential interrelated effects. As an example, Cyclone Amphan in 2020 highlights the value of multi-hazard early warnings in India. Accurate advanced forecasts of tropical cyclone Amphan in India and Bangladesh underpinned a successful disaster mobilization campaign, including the evacuation of more than 3 million people, which has been praised for limiting casualties and serving as a textbook example for multi-hazard early warning systems. A good example to illustrate this is the case of Matsuyama City and their voluntary disaster response that worked well under a disaster situation. Resilient communities can break the chain of influence when the time comes because they have a good understanding of cascading and compound risk, strong social capital, and community leaders with knowledge and networks. Matsuyama City not only has a strong leader, but the city's residents also show leadership by voluntarily responding to the disaster and the aftermath of heavy rain in 2019. Their activities saved lives when facing the risk of landslides. This example illustrates that the framework of the measures to single hazards can also be effective for multi-hazards. Step three is recovery. Flexible re relief and recovery efforts are also of considerable importance. To provide people with a safety net for large shocks, social protection measures are necessary. Such adaptive social protection measures require flexibility and a well-targeted delivery to transfer resources to disaster victims in a timely fashion. Compound disasters may cause people to face multiple challenges and difficulties for an extended period of time. Local governments need to provide additional social protection for such victims. In the long run, designing a seamless recovery process and preparedness should be considered comprehensively and systematically. Considering building back better and beyond is critical for adaptive recovery. While building back better involves a short and medium term response to recovery from disasters, resilience should be enhanced with long term, continuous economic and social measures. Economic measures include revenue diversification, market insurance, and financial inclusion. Through disaster risk financing, governments need to stop various financing sources to support these protection mechanisms. Enhanced social capital is another important action. Resilient communities with strong social capital can break the chain of influence when a difficult time comes because they have a good understanding of cascading and compound risk, and community leaders with knowledge and networks. For the implementation of these measures, measures we should have a better and more adaptive risk governance structure. In this lesson, we learned how resilience enhancement measures could be considered under three steps. Step one, preparedness. Here, the key is to know where the most vulnerable spots and populations are situated. And to do that, you can use a tool like multi-hazard maps. Step two, response. 
where the priority is to stop cascading impacts to happen after a first disaster strikes. And step three, recovery. Making sure to build back better with adaptive capacity and incorporating preparedness for the next possible disaster. Please note that the measures should be prepared based on the local situations and communities. Uh, can start from either preparedness, response and recovery without following an order. In the next video lesson, we will introduce how to implement these measures and design an adaptive implementation framework.